Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good afternoon, everybody. A warm welcome to the seventh session of Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management Research and Innovation Webinar Series, FRIWS 2021. All right. FRIWS uh, 2021 uh, virtual talk session, uh, especially created by Office of Research and Industry Linkage, FHDM, with a goal to bring together bright minds to give talks and, and tips that are idea focused and on a range of subjects related to conducting research and inculcating innovation for fasting learning inspiration and wonder and provoke conversation. You must hold on to your seat and be with us throughout this session because uh, we have a very interesting session for you this afternoon. Before we get into it, let me introduce myself and our team. My name is Dr. Nozalika Osman. I'm a senior lecturer of a department of hotel and management. With me today, uh, I have uh, Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad, Muhammad Afiz Muhammad Anafia, uh, Deputy Dean of uh, Research and Linkage Industry of Faculty, uh, Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management. In a while, he will be joining us to share his opening remarks. Also from the faculty, we have uh, Mr. Fidaus Abduhanan that will um, be moderate the chat function and managing the Zoom page. Okay. Dr. Afiz. Okay, thank you, Zalika. Uh, this is a very short uh, opening. Yeah? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much to the Madam uh, uh, for MC and also Mr. Fido Hanan for managing uh, these sessions. Uh, I would like to uh, say thanks uh, to Dr. Yong, uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, I, I believe that we have been doing this uh, similar us uh, while we were with RM, uh, IRMI yeah, at that point of time. Uh, again, uh, I would like to welcome everyone to this session. This is our seventh, eh? seventh yes. uh, say session eh? throughout mm -hmm. the this semester. Uh, we will have another one, the last one, I think maybe next week or next two weeks. But perhaps talking about this topic, um, I believe that uh, this is high time for us to learn about researcher visibility. And in fact, I think Dr. Yong will also talk about uh, two parts of this visibility, which is which is the research visibility and researchers visibility. This is two different attributes of visibility. One is talking about your how visible are your research work, and the second will be talking about uh, how visible are you as a researcher and also subject matter expert. So uh, I hope everyone can learn from. Uh, Dr. Yong, and perhaps uh, we can support our UITM 2025 initiative. Uh, and I believe with our enhanced visibility, therefore, uh, it will support the UITM aim to be ranked among the best universities around the world. So for that, thank you. Uh, pass back to you, Dr. Zalika. Right, thank you, Dr. Apis, for the uh, opening remarks. Okay. Um... So before we proceed, let me explain the format of our session. The talk will take around 50 to 60 minutes uh, without any break in between. So any question or comment, please post in the question and answer box under the chat function at the uh, bottom right hand side of your Zoom page. And at the end of the session, we will uh, allocate around 30 minutes uh, for question and answer session. So QR code uh, will be displayed on your screen and the link will be shared in the chat function towards the end of the session of registration and feedback. So please fill in your details accordingly because we will provide an e-certificate through, uh, through your email for everyone uh, and training hours especially for um, UITM staff. And lastly, I would like to remind everyone to kindly make sure that your microphone and camera are turned off uh, throughout the session to ensure there's no interruption. So now that we 
have um, all the formality, all of the wing. So let's get to the main reason why 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 we all we all here. So the topic had been chosen for our discussion today is visual visibility tips and tricks. Okay. So let now let me introduce to you our speaker for today, Dr. Yong Soon Kong. Okay, Dr. Yong, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, I can I brief uh, I will brief the uh, the introduction of Dr. Yong. Dr. Yong is currently holding the position of coordinator of publication at the research management uh, center office uh, of deputy vice chancellor UITM. He includes um, sorry he includes monitor uh, monitoring the performance of forty five UITM journal provide the consultation for editorial board of UITM journal and is assist the management uh, management in making policy strategy related to scientific journal publication. He also member of the faculty of applied science. He, he research interests are in organic synthesis and environmental remediation with value added agriculture waste material. Modified agricultural waste uh, were used in the sorption and or mobilization of toxic metal iron from contaminated soil or water. He has also collaborated in utilizing waste materials from cockles and mushroom for remediation of metal contaminated water, wastewater and soil. He is the funder of the soil uh, assessment and remediation research group and has received funding from national institution and has collaborated with overseas institution such as Konkan University and Chula Longkorn University, Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, now that we got all the formality out of the way, let's start with our session for today. Without further ado, I welcome to the screen uh, Dr. Yong Kok Soon Kong. And please welcome, Doctor. The floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Zalika, uh, for the kind introduction. Um, uh, before I start, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Hafiz for thinking of me. Uh, while uh, inviting me for in time, uh, inviting me to to give this talk on visibility. Now, frankly speaking, uh, the, I mean the, the 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 topics related to visibility is Dr. Hafiz Pote. So I'm just borrowing a few of his uh, ideas when we were out uh, having talks and and uh, outreach program last 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 two years ago. So he is the master. I'm just borrowing a few of his ideas and plus with a few of experience. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, um, okay, okay, can you please uh, share the slide? Or, or is it my, myself yes. who said? Uh, you can uh -huh. share also, Dr. Yong. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, sure. Give me a second. Yeah. Okay, I just want to check if you have, uh, if you can see the, the screen of my slide. Is it visible? It shows that you have started sh screen sharing, but it doesn't show your slide yet. Maybe wait for a while. Mm -hmm. Have you uh have you opened the slide? Yes, I did. Uh, it seems like my mm. entire computer has um an issue right here. It's the first time that my computer hang because I share this screen. <laughs> um, it never happens oh, to me. My computer never hang. Um. Oh, doctor, want to me share the slide? Uh, not sure, because I can hear and speak. 
directly to you. It's just my entire screen and 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 um okay, wait. Let me try again. Okay, I'm actually facing some issue right here because I once I open a slide and I share the screen, um, and then the entire thing has stopped right now. And you see the screen. Okay, I think uh, Mr. Fridaus is sharing the screen right now, am I right? Yeah, I'm, I'm taking over. Maybe Dr. Zalika can, can you already see us? Uh, the, is it still hang your computer, Dr. Yong? Uh, I already uh, converted my, my screen to slideshow, but I no longer share the screen. So I think- Okay, I yeah. Uh, do you want to try again? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Can you see yes. my screen? Yes. Light show. Hopefully okay, we'll yes. Well. All right. Is it okay? Can you see the whole yes. screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. Right. So apologies for the slight glitches. Uh well, I'm not I'm not too uh, familiar with Zoom, so that's why all, all the some glitches over there. Anyway, uh, so uh, I think uh, you know me already from uh, Dr. Zalika's introduction. So my name is Dr. Yong, so you can just call me Yong whenever you want. So I'm the head of Ethics and Publication Unit, RMC, Office of uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, uh, Research and Innovation. So today I'm going to give a little bit of tips and also uh, sharing a little bit of my experience about researchers' visibility. So, um, so before I continue, I would like to inform you that I might use a few examples that are of individuals that you might know or you might not know. So uh, I, I hope I hope during the talk uh, you don't take it personally if you if you're offended. Yeah, uh, let's take it lightly and, and uh, take it as an informal one. Yeah. So today's talk, I'm going to cover a few of these points: the introduction, of course, and then the four strategies that I would like to recommend to the listeners right here. And then finally, I'm going to cap off my talk with a conclusion. So to begin with, um, visibility sounded very informal, but actually it is one of the important things that researchers need to pay attention. Because when we do research, we are not just simply doing the research for the sake of just publishing it. Because there's one more thing that every researcher needs to pay attention is getting your message across the board. So when you publish, the message only reaches the scientific community. Whereas, what, what, what about the general public? So these are the things that we need to go a little bit more, one more step ahead, and then extend those information to the general public using layman's terms so that they get our idea and if possible, inspire them to use whatever the news this discovery that we have discovered, yeah? So in here, you can see that visibility have various impact and it can be categorized into two yeah the first one is academic impact in which like i told you just now it's in the researchers community or the research community yeah so a completed research once it is published then the um, the, the the experts in your field will get to read your papers gets to discuss and perhaps inspire new research yeah so that is the impact that will, you, you're going to have once you publish your paper. Now, the citation is usually used, the number of citation is usually used to indicate how impactful is your research. So the more citation that you, uh, that you receive, that means the more uh, researchers that have used the outcome of your research and inspire them to conduct their own research. So that is why, why nowadays researchers, especially in the uh, academic community, they look at citation so much because the more citation that we're going to increase one more indicator and we call it the edge index. Now edge index is, uh, take, it, take, it, uh, uh, take it in general, yeah? Edge index is generally the number of citation divided by the number of articles that you have. Now, 
That means the higher the hedge index, the more impactful your research is. And that is usually used in order to benchmark a researcher's capability and also impact. So let's say if you have higher hedge index, usually that will be looked at when it comes to a researcher's promotion. And there's one more thing. Uh, for any renowned researchers in the world and also in Malaysia, uh, KPT, for example, Kementerian Pengajian Tinggi, they actually reserve some award for top, uh, top scientists in Malaysia. And guess what? They use hedge index uh, to judge that and to determine the winner. So that is why it is so important for researchers. However, there's one more thing that many people overlook, which is the societal impact. Now, how does that uh, be useful and so important is that when you created a research, most of the time, people forget that it is for the community, for the well-being of human and also Malaysian specifically. And because of that, once we publish, we still need to get the message to the layman's, the pachi pachi, the uh, farmers, and also the roadside people who may not even going to read your scientific paper, but they read newspaper. And hence, our, our, our discovery would need to go a bit more and then convert it into something that is easily acceptable by the general public. And because why? Because our uh, discovery may be useful for the community. Like for example, if you have discovered a new way to make new food, for example, like uh, Jam Nanas, for example, nowadays the collaboration between FSG and also, if not mistaken, Faculty of Hotel. Now, this is uh, something that could be impactful to the farmers, especially the, uh, the pineapple farmers in Johor. So take that as an example. New discovery benefits a lot of people. So that is what we aim to achieve. So in order to achieve those uh, importance, the first strategy I would like to recommend uh, and possibly uh, the one that I highly recommend is uh, to aim high. Now, this is a general term. You probably don't have any idea, but aiming high means be competent. Because if you want to aim high, let's aim high when we publish our paper. Now, by meaning aiming high is that try your very best to publish in high impact journal. Journal, yeah, not proceeding, journal. Because in terms of proceeding journal, journal actually ranks higher. It's more difficult to publish. Yeah. So be, be, before you even consider publishing a high impact journal, consider whether our research is quality enough to be published in high impact journal. So with that, the, con, uh, the conception of the research idea is very, very important. Now, when you create a research proposal, make sure they are very, very novel. Yeah? If it's not novel, make sure they are going to contribute to the benefits of the society. So it can act in two ways. Either it's very novel or very useful later on. Yeah, Because why? Usually high impact journals, they will look at novelty. The more novel your research, not reported by anywhere, usually there is very high chance that you'll, you'll be able to publish in high impact journal. Yeah. Now, because why high impact journals, they usually look at quality. Yeah. So in terms of quality, there are so many aspects. Novelty is just one. Now, apart from novelty, what else high impact journals look at? They look at the robustness of your data. You cannot rely uh, on, on a small sample size to publish in high impact journals. Usually in higher impact journals, they are going to look at very big data size, sample size, I would say. Yeah. So you know, you know, you know best in your field. Uh, so I'm from a science science background, so I probably could not advise you what are the uh, technical things that you look at, uh, but, but you know best. But usually high quality gives you higher chance to uh, publish in high impact journals. Now that is because with high impact journals, usually the reputation is higher. People are more acceptable to high impact journals because it's so difficult to get in. The quality is so good whatever published in high impact journals usually is very good. That is a perception people have. And because of that, if you manage to publish one, usually it will be read by so many people. And these people are in research. 
and and guess what if the more people read your papers then that there is a higher chance that you're going to receive more citation yeah and that is very evident uh, recently we are going to have we, we have one uh, meeting with Elsevier and we asked them what are the papers that give us the most citation it's q1 q1 q2 or q1 q2 means uh, the first quartile or the second quartile, which means that these are the journals that rank 50% on top of the ranking list. So the best way to do it, lah, publish in high impact journals. Yeah. Now, by publishing in high impact journals or not just high impact journals, any index journal, no need to go for high impact, any index journal, you are essentially opening your research account because by the time you successfully publish and your, uh, your paper has been read by the general committee, not many people realize that during the submission process, they are using a certain tool. Now, these tools are uh, submission uh, manuscript submission systems such as Scholar One. Now, Scholar One is owned by Clarivate. Manuscript Central, if not mistaken, is by Springer, if not mistaken an editorial manager, which is owned by Elsevier. Now, these are the tools or the system owned by this major publisher. By the time you submit and manage to publish, they will have a record. Yeah, they will have a record that, okay, so now you have published one paper. They assume you are one of the experts in the field that you publish. And, 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 and then what? That leads to many opportunities. Opportunities like invitation to review, and possibly they even create your, your researcher profile without you even asking. They already have your profile. So they already recognize you as a research expert. I mean, the expert in your field by just publishing in an index journal. Yeah. However, this is only reserved for these three systems. Lah. I know there are many journals that are using a free system such as OJS. OJS means Open Journal System. Now, this system is free for use and there, there are nobody maintaining unless by the uh, journal management themselves. So that is why high impact journals, they, they don't kind of use this. Many of these higher rank or high impact journals uses the three system that you can see right here. So what, I mean, what, 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 what are we waiting on? Right? Of course, try our best. Publish in index journal who uses this three system and then you get your name on board. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to say. By getting your name in this system, you will be visible by the top scientist who manages this journal. So I'm not just saying index journal, yeah? High impact journals. Also, the chief editors will see you. So once you have published, you're going to receive countless of invitation to review. And that is actually a recognition, yeah? And, and by the way, uh, one, more, one more advice. Once you receive the invitation, please respond as soon as possible. Not responding will be very bad for your visibility. Because why? Once you get your name into these three systems, if you respond late, this system will also record. You also record your performance. So that does not reflect good on you. If you want to say no, say it quick. Don't, don't, don't make them wait. Yeah? Because usually they're going to give you seven days to respond. So you better respond within that seven days. It's okay to say no, actually, but just don't make them wait, yeah? Okay, so, and uh, now being in my unit, I also deal with a lot of journal publication. So a lot of things that I also deal is about uh, which, which kind of journal that we should go for. Of course, I would say high impact journals, um, but high impact journals, I also admit, even myself also find it difficult to publish in high impact journals. So what are the other options that we have? So you can see there, open access, multidisciplinary, but hear me out. They all have pros and cons, yeah? So high impact journals, the pros, I already informed you, it's very good, by all means go for it. But if you want to go for other type of publish, uh, uh, other, other type of journals, such as open access journal, it is also a good idea for you to go for it, yeah? By the way, for those who don't know what is open access, it's simply a new way of uh, publication in which previously, whatever that we publish inside a journal, 
it can only be accessible if the institution subscribe to it, which means that it is it, it requires a, a fee before you can read that full that, that full text article. Whereas for open access journals, once you publish, it will be accessible for free. No charge is imposed. So in this case, uh, it is said that open access journals, they are very visible, which I think is true. But here's the thing. There are evidence that says that even open access journal is more visible than high impact journals but somehow it does not invite high citation. And uh, it is closely related to the quality because why? Usually high impact journals, they are highly cited because of the perception that people have on them. They are very high quality. Whereas open access journal, there's a question. People might think that, okay, I read your articles, but are they reliable? So those are the questions people might always think when they, when they read open access journal. Um, so due to the quality of the, the paper, but by all means, if you can publish in open access journal, go for it. Just don't overspend yourself because usually open access journal, we're going to charge you a lot of money. Well, if you have the money, by all means, go for it. Uh, but if you don't, there are a lot of free journals available nowadays. Yeah. Okay, now. The next thing that I want to point out is multidisciplinary journal. Now, um, I'm not sure about you. If you just want to publish for the sake of it, um, probably you want to reconsider because like we had discussed earlier, you want to publish and you want to get the right people to read your research, the researcher in your field. So don't you think that you should publish in a journal related to your field, like Journal of Hotel and Tourism, Journal of Food, Food, uh, Food, Food, Food Technology or Food Design, whatever. Those are the journals that I think uh, faculty of hotel uh, staff should go for because those are the ones that the expert can use your information, can critique your information uh, for, for, uh, and critique your uh, research output as well. So get your research to the right audience because if you publish in multidisciplinary journal, um, many people read it, maybe, maybe many people read it, maybe not. Because for a researcher that have a very high time constraint, they can't read all the papers. So do you see the problem? Multidisciplinary, uh, multidisciplinary journal have so many fields of study, they don't even know where to start. So do you see the problem, multidisciplinary? So it's not wrong to submit to this kind of journal, but in long run, it might hurt your impact because probably not, not many people are interested to read this kind of journal because it's too difficult to find your paper. So once again, publish in professional journal in your field of research. So that is the advice that I would like to give. Lah. Now, I am going to give you a little bit of advertisement of uh, UITM Journal. Now, if you want to get over of our annual KPI, there are many ways you can do. Uh, because since last year, uh, ERA considered not only Scopus or Web of Science Index Journal, they also include my site journal as well. So people, these are the journals that you can submit your paper to. Uh, I would say close to 90% are free at the moment. So by all means, submit your manuscript. Let them check for you. Yeah, And if they got published, they should be quite easy to publish. Easier than the, the, I mean, the Scopus Index Journal. Yeah, So here's the list. And if you uh, still cannot get the whole list, just type UITM Journal in Google and you will see the portal. So just go to any one of these portal and you can see more of this list. Yeah? And of course, we also have uh, the upcoming new journal, journals that are newly established. So there are 19 of them. They are not yet indexed, but they need our support. So please, if you have like uh, FYP students that have uh, some data, they are quite good, but probably not good enough for index journals. Please send to them. 
they are more than happy to receive your manuscript. Yeah. So moving on, the next part is not about publication, but more of your strategy on how to connect with your community. Now, collaboration can come in so many ways. Your collaborator can come from within UITM or maybe outside of UITM. But above all, uh, you should do this thing. When you collaborate, make You should have a mentor in university. So in this case, uh, the more capable researcher. Sorry, can you listen to me? Yeah, yeah, we are. We can. Uh, so the, the, the more capable researcher that you collaborate with, the more ideas, more ideas and more critical comment to improve the quality of your research. And that is why usually if you asking people to collaborate with you and they reject, don't take it hard, okay? Maybe they haven't seen the good things on you and maybe they want to collaborate with a better person. So don't take it personally, yeah? So find more, yeah? By all means, find a more competent researcher than you to kind of collaborate because that will make your research much more better, yeah? And, and one more thing, one more benefit a more competent researcher usually already have a good network. So when they know you, they might recommend you to their network and that expands your visibility and also citation. So collaboration also need to do right, yeah? I, 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 I don't say that you don't collaborate with people that are less than you, you still collaborate because there's something that you can, you can, you can, you can collaborate, something you can do, okay? So those are the things lah, yeah? Now, this one is quite subjective. I call it care. Now, care is like a take care of a lot of things. So these are the ones that you can do by yourself. Okay, the first one is care for yourself. Now, a lot of times when we chasing KPI, we forgot that this uh, research actually has to be very ethical because the moment you seal up, the moment you, I mean, choose the wrong path and do it the wrong way, that thing might stick with you for a long time and it takes time to actually change their perception on you. And more so in the world of research, although it can be very big, but it could be very small because why? Social media, uh, news, especially the bad ones can spread really, really fast. So take care of your own reputation. That is probably the most important thing a researcher should have, yeah? So maintain high standard of integrity. That is uh, the thing that I always tell uh, myself, not, not just everybody, myself also, because the, sometimes you want to achieve KPI or you want to get promoted, you choose the wrong way. Um, but if, if, if you already there, then stop. Uh, everything can be changed. You can correct yourself, by the way. But if you still keep on, keep on doing it, then probably that might not going to do good for you in the long run, yeah, because of the reputation. Uh, uh, publication ethics two days ago under Ipsis. So if you happen to uh, miss that one, I, I recommend you to recap on that one. Uh, Ipsis is going to post the recorded video very soon for so many reasons because of that. Okay. okay, next one is care for your collaborators. So earlier, once you manage to start a collaboration, people notice you, it's very important for you to maintain that communication. Engage, we call it, engage your collaborator. So when you first say hi, and then after that, after one year, you say hi again, of course, people won't remember you. That is why maintaining this communication is very important. I mean, it doesn't have to be so difficult because let's look at our calendar annually. How many public holidays do we have? Just send them a card. Tell them, hi, happy new year, happy Chinese New Year, happy uh, Hari Raya, whatever. Because this one will keep yourself in their mind because you won't know whenever you get lucky because these so-called key collaborators, the important person in research, might have uh, some ideas. They might have new project, like for example, a new book project. They need writers to give them uh, chapters. They might think of you. 
they might send you an email. Uh, so and so, would you be interested to join me to write this book? I mean, that is what we are waiting for, isn't it? Because we want to increase our visibility. And I was told by the organizer that the main objective is to increase publication. That is how. Because the prominent researchers they have so many ideas, but they don't have people to write. So you might be one of the candidates they might think of you. Just keep, keep saying hi to them. They might remember you for that. Yeah? And then the next one for your team. Now, this one is your subordinate. So just now, you remember that I told you, uh, uh, I mean, your, your, your fellow colleagues, there are new, I mean, the starters in, 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 in the field of research. Don't ignore them. Let them join you because you may not know uh, when you need their help. And this is why you will need to uh, take them in, do research together, and then hopefully they will be as successful as you. Because you will need, you, I mean, a successful researcher actually uh, will only improve with the help of fellow colleagues. Research is not something that you can do alone. You need people to stand alongside with you and support you when you improve. And actually, so because of that, you will need to maintain a well, healthy work culture because research also looks at your chemistry, people chemistry. Because when you are so difficult to, I mean, if you're so pleasant to deal with, of course, people might, might, might be happy to work with you, no matter how hard is the work. You see? So that, that is the key. Um, easier said than done because uh, I think not many people can do it. I know Dr. Hafiz is definitely one of that people. Um, but anyway, you can always ask him, what are the tips? Yeah, maybe you can ask another talk, uh, another talk uh, by, by Dr. How to maintain healthy work culture. Uh, because why? You have uh, your seniors, okay? How do you gain their trust? Because when they trust you, then they can give the bigger responsibility for you. And by, by talking about bigger responsibility, we're talking about uh, admin, admin, uh, admin posts. Yeah? Because once your boss can trust you, then they can give you bigger posts. And that is one way they can improve. But here, we're talking about co-authorship. Because authorship actually is not written by one person. They need several persons. So in one section that they need people to write, they might ask you to do it and you better deliver once you promise. Lah. Yeah? And another thing is the juniors. Okay? What are people that's under you? Yeah? Uh, deliver whatever that you promise. Okay? And then of course, juniors also needs a lot of your support. So when they need support, come and support them. Because with that only, they will give you the respect that you, that you should have. So with all this healthy working relationship, I'm sure the team will going to go up really fast and improve. Yeah? So I think uh, for, uh, for time concern, I think I'm going to move on to the second strategy. Lah, yeah? Second strategy. Now this one, it's a bit more technological, and I call it use SEO, not SEO, SEO. So I will tell you what is that. Now, SEO means search engine optimization. Now, for those who don't know what is this, this is just simply making your manuscript more discoverable by using a few of these tricks. Now, for those who don't know what is search engine optimization, now, um, how Google works is that they have a certain algorithm. Uh, this algorithm will going to go to website to website, and then they're going to crawl and extract whatever the information that they can extract. Now, usually this information can only be extracted if it is type written in uh, HTML. So there are a few language that I myself don't know, but I do know that if it is in HTML format, then search engine can read it. And by the time people search whatever information related to you, it will pop up. The more information they can get, the higher they are going to pop up. Now, why this is so important? Because nowadays, is there anything else other than Google when you search? Sometimes people even call a Google that word. They don't call it Yahoo that word. Again, so... You need to, now, by the time people use that search engine to search your name, you better make sure your name is on top. 
So maybe after this, you can try. Google your own name and then see where is your name. If your name is on top, the first search list, congratulations. You are very SEO. You are search engine optimized. But if you don't, then don't worry. There are many things you can do. Yeah. So how do we do it? Now, you will have to get yourself visible using electronic media. Now, this one could be done on the web page or website, or maybe even your social media portal. But here, I'm going to focus on how do you make your manuscript. So by the time you send in, uh, before you even submit your manuscript, you need to compose. How do you write your manuscript? Uh, there are a few things that you have to remember when, when you write your manuscript. That is, you will have to use the right keyword. The right keyword, the right phrase that best define what you do. And most of all, best define yourself if you want to be discovered. Yeah. So when you look at these uh, so-called examples, yeah, the title, subtitle, the keyword, the abstract, the mega, uh, the, the metadata, all these things are part of a manuscript. So which is why every journal articles will going to ask you to provide this information. Why is that? Because if you provide this information correctly, search engine can find you. So how do we do that? Oh, but, but before that, yeah, you realize that at the bottom you have image and video description. Now, how does a how does the uh, the, the algorithm read an image? They can't actually. They can't read image. Yeah. So algorithm is not that smart. They have to read whatever that you type in. So every image and video you can actually give them a description. Alt text we call it alt text. So you type. If the image is about yourself, then write your name onto it. People, when they search your name, the, I mean, the image will pop up, the video will going to pop up. So these are the things that not many people pay attention, but very, very important. Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to go to the next slide and give you a few examples how you should do that. Actually, this image is uh, taken from Elsevier's author support page. And you can see how people can, uh, what they call, um, Optimize, yeah, optimize their search engine uh, capability. So the first thing is the title. So formulate a concise and well-constructed title as well as the abstract. Now, the title cannot be too long. It has to be short enough, but uh, have enough information that best describe your article. So you have to know what are the keywords. I don't know what's your keyword, but I do know my own field because the field that I, that I do research for, they have many, many keywords. And then you might ask me, what kind of keywords that you should use? Now, there are two ways. Okay, number one, you want to uh, have the specific people to read your article. So if you want to achieve that, then you might want to consider long keyword. The longer the keyword, the, more, the smaller the group of people were going to uh, discover your article. However, that does not help your visibility because when we publish an article, we want as many people to read our article as possible. So too long is not good, too short, too many people, I mean, too many hits. So you're going to be placed at the bottom of the search list. That also is not good. So you probably have to do a bit of trial and error. What you can do is, uh, in order to determine the keywords, have a few lists, have a few options. Yeah? And then once you have determined those key words and also key phrases, use Google, search it, okay? So after you search, you're going to see how many hits. The higher the hits, the worse. You should, you should go in the middle, yeah? It be because like, for example, I'm from the field of chemistry. I can't possibly put my keyword as chemistry because chemistry, there's so many things. And there's so many papers about, about keywords. Possibly you're going to get millions and millions of hits. Then who is going to discover our paper, right? So be smart when you choose this keyword, yeah? Okay, now, once you have determined the best keyword for yourself, then what you do, of course, write it down under the keyword section right here. Uh, but there's one more thing that I wish I know earlier. Actually, once you determine the keyword, you should put it, if possible, back into the title, if you can. But if you cannot, it's okay. 
make sure you repeat the same keyword in the text. The more keywords that you have, the, the more significant, okay, the higher the ranking of your articles in the search list. So you have to be using the keywords over and over again in your own manuscript, yeah? But if possible, put it back in your title, yeah? So after that, then come to other things, the caption. So caption is also another thing, apart from the alt text, for every graph, for every images, for every tables that you have in manuscript, make sure you have the caption. I mean, this is, this is impossible. How do you find an article with an image without caption? Now, every image, every figure will have caption. So double check on that one and make sure this caption also have the keyword. Yeah? So that when people search a keyword on the field, the data, the graph also pops up. And then what else? Yeah. Oh yeah, the subheadings. Now subheadings, I'm not so sure how it is being used, but subheadings probably you're going to uh, uh, compartmentalize the the section or the, the discussion that you want to uh you, know, you want to share uh, perhaps that's a way uh, but above all to sum things up keywords keywords and keywords make sure you get the right keyword and you use it consistently those are the final message and of course social media which I will go to uh, describe later so later on there will be a section about social media so I think I'm going to Move on okay now next thing is of course establish your, your, your presence because i uh in uitm people possibly knew you exist but what about overseas people that people won't know that you you even exist people don't even know your name so how do how do you put yourself in the map so that you're searchable there are many ways yeah by the way these are the examples that i would like to propose now if possible have an account in all of this profile. Now, this profile are actually uh, professional research profile or semi-professional, uh, if I can call it, but I still call it a research profile because these are the uh, so-called database or portals that researcher use to deposit their paper. So now do you know why? Because researchers are inside and you yourself as a researcher, you should get inside there share your information, let everybody knows that you have published something. Now, there is ranking actually. Which one would rank first? I would say ORCID. ORCID will rank number one. Uh, reason because this one is uh, heavily vetted, it's, well, it's heavily screened, heavily checked by so many parties. Crossref is one, one of the report, reputable organization that facilitate publication. The other one is Publons. Now, Publons, is a must, it's no longer an option because Publons is owned by Clarivay and they already replaced Researcher ID. Now, for those who don't know what is Researcher ID, that is actually a research profile previously by Thomson ISI. But since Thomson ISI is bought over by Clarivay, they introduced Publons. So if you don't have one, you better have one. Now, why Publons is so good? Because inside there, you can also put in whatever the reviews that you have done. So I know people might have trouble trying to publish, but if you have reviews, there's somewhere you have to start. You cannot publish, then you review. Once you finish your review, put it inside Publons. There are numbers that you can appreciate or people can appreciate. And by the way, by putting your name in Publons, you also make yourself visible by the Web of Science editor because they also tap information from Publons as well. So if you want people to invite you to review papers, then start your Publons profile. And the next one is Scopus. Yeah. So Scopus, uh, if I can say it is used for our promotion. So every time you go for interview, they ask you what is your hash index. They are referring to Scopus hash index. Where do you get it? Scopus ID. Lah. So when you establish one, which you possibly have several, so you have to merge it. Then you have your hash index right here. So these are the three majors. You must have one. Whereas Google, surprisingly, even if you don't have one, it's also okay, but you also better have one because of the popularity. Nowadays, Google Scholar, they are very popular. And 
uh, they're very nice to have because usually among all these profile, usually the hedge index in Google Scholar usually is very high. So if you feel sad, then look at your Google Scholar profile, uh, you might be more happy when, when, then when you look at the problems and Scopus ID. The others are research, research gate and also academia. Research gate also is very, very good because uh, they allow uh, open access articles yeah, to be shared there. So once you share, it allows people to read it. And surprisingly, ResearchGate, they are very popular. And because of that, once you created your profile and you share your research, the visibility is actually quite high, if not, if not higher than uh, Google Scholar. Because people already think that ResearchGate, they have free papers. You can read it. So a lot of people. And, and, and one more, ResearchGate administration also is, has done a very good job in... Uh, boosting up their search engine optimization. Usually when you search something, research gate usually pop up on the list of the search. So you want to get yourself a profile over there. Academia EDU, similar to research gate, probably not as good, but I mean, if you have the energy and time, might as well do it. But most importantly, you ITM expert. Now, if you, if you, if you cannot see your profile in UITM expert, that is a big problem. Because a lot of uh, uh, a lot of processes in UITM relies on this one. That includes how many students are you supervise, what are the projects that you are currently handling, and how many papers that you have published. In 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 a nutshell, in a nutshell, UITM expert is the most complete among all of these profiles. Yeah. So you, you, I mean, you, you can create the others. The first three is a must because that is the portal where the world can see you, but UITM expert is the most complete. So you, you better check your profile. If you haven't checked, check your profile UITM expert. Make sure the information, they are all correct. So a lengthy discussion about this presence because why? I, I noticed that not many people pay too much attention on this one, but these are the tools that international researchers use to see you. So if you don't have one, then you better make sure you get one fast. Okay, now the next one is probably not applicable right now, uh, but last time when we attend conference, we used to choose the place that we want to go. Okay, no wrong on doing that. You can go wherever you want, but before you decide to register and pay that registration fee, ask yourself, is that conference attended by the leaders or the top scientists in the field that you are, you are researching? Ask yourself that. If there are top scientists going there, then you better go. Now, in my field of study, I already identified several. And I identified one conference that are attended by at least 20, 20 to 30 experts. They are all chief editors in high impact journal. The fees are not cheap, but by all means go. Because if you get yourself inside there, you get to mingle with the top scientists. And these are the conference that you should go. Now, when you go there, don't just present one research. You present your entire collection of articles not just one, entire collection. Now, these are the trends that I see uh, many overseas researchers they are doing. When they present, they don't present one title, they present a general title, but they showcase all their research. So these are the tips. Lah. Next time, if you can do it, you do it. Yeah. And then of course, uh, in your email, in your email, don't just put your name. Below your name, put your phone number, put your uh, alternate email, and don't forget to put a link of your Orchid, Pablons, and Scopus ID. Make people life easier. When people receive an email of you, they don't know you, but they, when they click this profile, they probably impress with something that you have done in research. So a lot of links in your email and even in your uh, social media posts, if you can. Okay, so next one is uh, the tools that are uh, developed nowadays is called Altmetrix. Now, this one I probably won't go to say too much, but Altmetrix is said to be uh, a better tool or better parameter to reflect impact. Because last time when we look at hash index, they're all from academics. So that is uh, very good to show research impact. But how about 
a societal impact. They can't. So and because of that, they're trying to pick the likes, yeah, the likes from Facebook, uh, the likes from other social media portal like YouTube or whatever. Based on that, they come up with a new one, Altmetrics. Now, it may give you a bit more information on how well your research has been received by different aspects of the community. Uh, but I, I, I currently don't have experience how to, ex or how to explain this one, but somehow you possibly can uh, gauge okay, how well your research has been accepted by the community. Yeah? And then uh, they also pick a citation as well from Mendeley and all those uh, top uh, database. So these are the things that you possibly can use to gauge how well your research has been doing. Okay, strategy next is number three, be, oh, okay. I, I know this is a bit controversial, be, be good looking because you have no control on that one. And, 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 and please don't blame your parents for that. Uh, and please don't blame God for that uh, because we are born. We are, we are beautiful in one way, yeah? So now the message is that you have to be presentable, not good looking, you have to be presentable. Yeah? No matter what you do, uh, just make sure you're well prepared. Now, it starts with your CV. Whatever that you do, it starts with your CV. So CV, the first thing that people do is not your name. They look at your face first. So the headshot is probably one of the most important thing that people don't realize, but you should, you should know better. Lah, yeah? So I, 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 I can't stress this enough. Lah. Uh, the, the headshot is best done by professional. Now I have, uh, I have Dr. Hafiz to thank lah, because by the time he joined RMC with me previously, he got me a very nice headshot, which happens to be used as the poster for my talk. So, Thank you, Dr. Hafiz, for making me such a nice, nice headshot. By the way, if you can get professional to it, by all means do it because they know how to get a perfect angle, the perfect lighting. And above all, they also know how to touch up your face, touch up in a better way. Yeah. So, so don't, 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 go to, don't go to overseas and have your face rearranged. No need. Lah, yeah? Plastic surgery is very costly. No need. Just engage professional photographer, that would be enough. Lah, yeah? and, and, and then uh, dress accordingly, because why? When we put our face in the CV, it's professional. So you have to put on your best business suit. Um, so business suit is the rule of thumb, like general. I mean, no matter what, 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 what profession they're into, you dress nice in a business suit, have a nice headshot, that will be enough. Yeah? And next part is, the way you smile also send different message, yeah? And I believe nobody will going to smile as open mouth and wide open. Nobody smiles like that in their uh, CV photo. No, it sends a wrong message. You only smile like this when you post your face in social media. Um, usually, it starts with number one, no smile. Uh, but no smile, uh, kind of cold. Nobody will going to look at people with a grumpy face, maybe, maybe. Uh, but at least you can smile a little bit, like number two. They close green a little bit so that it invites attraction. It gives, it gives people that you are friendly and you are ready to collaborate. So smile a little bit. If not a little bit, smile a little bit wider, like number three, but don't go to number four and number five. Lah, yeah? Smiling is always inviting attention and also attracts people. So these are the three examples that I recognize and I picked from the internet. Uh, in terms of smiling, so all, all these three are smiles perfectly, I would say. But beyond that, look more. Look at the dress. Look at what they are wearing. It also gives you more information. Now, sometimes people don't pick business suit because they want to give people more information. Like the way they wear also signifies how prominent they are and also what profession they are doing. So by looking at this picture, I already know the first one is possibly an engineer because behind there, this equipment is actually, if not mistaken, is a universal tester. That is to test the mechanical strength, if not mistaken. So this is scientist or maybe engineer. Now in the middle here, probably all of you should know who he is. He's a chef, a well-known chef and also an alumni of a faculty hotel. So 
his the his his his, his attire is actually a chef's with attire. Now the only thing is probably he's too big that we we cannot see his background. But I believe the background is his restaurant. But I would say the best lah is the right hand side. He's a doctor. Uh, he's also a doctor in uh, with UITM. So the logo is there. Possibly uh, have have his name on his shirt. Probably will be better because straight away people know who his name is. Uh, so something to improve. But the stethoscope here tells you that he is a doctor. And guess what? Out of these three picture, the best looking face is this doctor as well. So, um, I I know this world is not fair because somebody born with a better face but live with it. I mean, if you feel like you don't look too good, put makeup. Even men also can put makeup. So do whatever you do. Have the best headshots to impress people. Yeah. Okay, strategy number four, and perhaps the last one I would say, uh, use electronic media. Now, this from from this point onwards, I would say most of these uh the content from this fourth strategy, they are of a non formal, non professional, not 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 to say non non formal way of how to increase your visibility. So electronic media nowadays, well, what's not electronic media? Almost everything is electronic, uh, but there are many options that you can go. And the first thing you can do is have your own personal website. Not many people are doing this because it's so tedious, uh, but it's not that difficult. You have to be persistent. I know there are several prominent researchers in UITM, they already have their personal website. Um, now, the reason because you are branding yourself, you're branding you, you sell yourself as a researcher. You don't even, I mean, you're, you're not just selling your research, but of course, having this personal web, uh, uh, website will also sell both things, your research as well as your own as a brand. And having a website will do just that. Now, if you don't have a website, don't worry. You can do through the blogs. Okay? You can start a blog or you can start with a Facebook page. Now, Facebook, you have personal and you have page. So page is quite similar to this one. Yeah. So if you can do that, start one and then share whatever that you're, you do for your work, for your life, uh, professional research, everything put inside there. That actually will going to market yourself. Later. And then number two, share your work in social media portals. Uh, this one is your personal profile. Now, a lot of people, when they, uh, they are not working, they are off times, they love to do a lot of community service, they are a lot of community work. Now, this don't underestimate what you do for community because that one also will bring attention, especially when what you do is actually very beneficial for the community. Like, for example, cleaning up the environment. I know environment is such a big issue that uh, that needs a lot of attention. So you may not know a lot of people are actually watching you by posting your uh, social in, in your social media portal. So these are a lot of things that you can do. Later on, I will give you examples like yeah, social media. Which one to go? Which one that you can go? Yeah. Uh, next one is prepare yourself a short biography in one or two line for social media sites. Why one or two line? You might ask. Uh, because people may not have a lot of time to read long paragraph. So think of yourself, two sentence, two sentence that best describe your profession. Yeah, chemist, uh, cook, or maybe uh, interior designer, location. These are the things, yeah, think of it. Because you might need to use this one to put in social media or maybe even your uh, CV as well because people were going to read the shortest and the most concise things about you. Then number four, be professionally vocal but remain concise. Oh, now, how this is done? Now, this is very similar to uh, the engagement that I told you, the collaboration. Now, this one, you don't have a person that you have identified but that does not mean that you can relax on that one because usually people were going to um, if you have follower, you don't know who your followers are, but sometimes your follower might going to wait for your recent post. So don't disappoint them. Have a consistent schedule of posting. Like try your best. Every week you post one post, good ones related to your work, related to your community service, even your private life also can. But try, 
try your best to keep your private life private, yeah? Because that might backfire if you share too many, too many things, yeah? So share consistently uh, so that people will, you, you have a follower and, and keep on following your, your progress, yeah? And then the final one, get into the line light of radio and television. I think this one is general knowledge. Lah. If you switch on the television, imagine how many people watch television nowadays. Talking about Malaysia, we're talking about millions. If you get yourself in television, you are visible by millions. Radio, probably not much, but it still do the work. Just get yourself into the mass media, yeah, if you can. Now, uh, just now I promise you to show you the examples of social media, what works best, what works not. Now, I have taken this screen capture from the, uh, the talk that I attended yesterday. And this is very interesting because from this graph, as you can see, no matter what countries that you see, even Malaysia as well, majority of the social network workers, uh, no, social network users, and the time that they spend, Mostly, they are spent on Facebook. So, apa lagi kan? Then, post in Facebook. Post as many as you want. Now, the good news is, uh, there's a function. If you post Facebook, uh, you can automatically share the same picture or image in Instagram. So, you don't have to worry about Instagram anymore. However, I'm just not sure how many people here are fond of using Twitter. I personally don't use Twitter, but Americans, they are crazy about Twitter because they say it's very short and they love it. Uh, so if your collaborator, if the, the future collaboration, you want to take it to US, then you might need to use Twitter now uh, because that's where they, where they like. Now you can see the Malaysia. No, I, I can't even see the sky blue area here. Probably not many people are using Twitter. So the choice is yours. Whichever social media that you want to use, just use it consistently. Yeah? And then this is the, uh, some article that I found about Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management. So this is one written by the Dean himself, Professor Salehuddin. So this article. Now, uh, for information, it's not too difficult for you to write an article and send it to news. They welcome your writing. But you have to write it concisely with a very layman's term. If you can do that, sell yourself. Because why? Your name appears here. And people know, well, at least you are the expert because you make your way into the news. Yeah. So this is one way. Yeah. Now, another one way is what I did. Um, this is probably the first video that I make for myself and it has been uh, uh, aired by Bernama TV. Not, not so popular, but what before I show you this video, I made this video uh, because my dean told me to do so. So okay, lah. I made one video of something that I did during that time. One of my research projects uses earthworms. So I have earthworms during that time. And uh, so I made a story out of it. And after this story, after I share this in Facebook, uh, a lot of people asked me, uh, do you sell earthworms? They asked me. I was like, um, I only do video. I, I don't sell earthworms. I only, I only do research using earthworms. So maybe you can do one for yourself. Now, this video is about three minutes long. So for those who haven't watched this, I would like to watch one one, but don't, don't, just don't ask me for earthworms lah, because I don't have any. So enjoy three minutes only. Dr. Young, sorry, you, uh, we cannot actually hear the voice, the sound of it. Yeah, you cannot hear the sound, yeah? Yeah. How do I share video that they can leave you some sensitive? Or is it okay I just jump uh yeah maybe you can share the link so that yeah I think I, I, I already sent the or I or I or I just uh, open it elsewhere. How do I share videos here? You have any idea? 
or mm. optimize or video clip. Let me see. Okay, one more time. Can you hear? Yep, yep. University Technology Mara UITM. Di sini saya ingin kongsi satu hobi yang boleh dicarikan satu sumber pendapatan sampingan. Semasa PKBE ini saya percaya ramai di antara kita telah mula berjinak-jinak dengan aktiviti berfaedah seperti bercucuk tanam bagi menolhi masa yang terbuang. Namun begitu agak sukar untuk mendapatkan bekalan baja terutama sekali semasa tempoh PKP. Najis daripada haiwan peliharaan ataupun manusia kurang sesuai dijadikan sebagai baja kerana risiko jangkitan penyakit terutama sekali semasa wabak COVID-19. Sebagai penyelesaian, baja organik yang selamat boleh dihasilkan daripada sisa-sisa dapur melalui teknik pengombosan dengan menggunakan cacing tanah Afrika. Sisa-sisa dapur seperti kupasan daripada sayuran, buah-buahan ataupun hampas kopi boleh dicampur dengan sedikit benih cacing tanah di dalam bekas plastik retung. Proses pengombosan ini amatlah mudah dan boleh dilakukan oleh sesiapa sahaja tanpa memerlukan ruang yang besar. Ianya dapat menghasilkan baju organik dan berbuntu dalam tempoh masa yang singkat. Ini kerana cacing tanah Afrika cepat makan, cepat membiak dan tidak memerlukan banyak penjagaan. Kita hanya perlu menyediakan keadaan yang lembab, dingin dan gelap serta bekalan oksigen yang cukup. Proses pengumpulan ini akan menghasilkan cecair gelap yang boleh diguna sebagai baca cecair selepas dicampur dengan air yang secukupnya. Dengan menggunakan baju organik sendiri, saya telah berjaya mengurangkan kos pembelian baju kimia. Sekiranya pembiakan I think you accidentally paused the video. Tanah Afrika ni berjaya, ianya juga boleh dijual sebagai benih, umpan memancing ataupun makanan ikan. Buat masa ini cacing di pasaran adalah berharga sebanyak RM500 sekilo atau RM1 seekor. Ya tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, walaupun cacing bukanlah haiwan peliharaan umum, ianya boleh dijadikan satu hobi yang mendatangkan ulangan yang lumayan. Setakat itu saja daripada saya, terima kasih dan selamat mencuba. So there you have it. Uh, the first video, I know there are many aspects that I can improve, but I'm working on it. Uh, but guess what? If you want to make yourself a video, record yourself because I understand that uh, the university corporate unit is inviting vlog uh, videos, short videos from, from all of you. So if you want to promote yourself, by all means, record your video, send it to uh, UITM uh, media. Uh, uh, a corp, uh, UITM corporate, the office, and they'll post it for you. And you want to do it because why? It will be shared in UITM's official website and uh, UITM's Facebook web, uh, UITM's Facebook page. Sorry, and you uh in, in that Facebook page there are around two hundred followers. If not mistaken, around one hundred plus one hundred or one hundred thousand plus followers. So when you share your videos over there, it is visible by about 100,000 people. Yeah? So try your luck. You may be beneficial for you. Yeah? So in attracting media attention in social media, graphics actually plays an important part. So in order to do that, you must be very concise. Yeah? So have skills in making graphical abstract. Now, uh, for those who publish in high impact journals, graphical abstract is needed because that connects with people. Now, just like I told you just now, when people look at a certain document, they aim for the images first. So that is why. Yeah? And when you do that, now even in making pictures as well, you have to be concise. Do not include unnecessary parts or images that don't help you to explain that one. So use only the most important one 
and avoid jargons if you have any text inside that. Use layman language so that people can understand your idea. And then finally, use attractive images that best describe your work, yourself, and also your work. Yeah. So this is the, the tips that is given by Elsevier. How do you uh, produce a very good uh, graphical abstract? So there are actually sections that you need to arrange here, yeah? and it can be generalized into three parts. So the first part is just like when you do your proposal, it start with a introduction, a problem statement, you may call it. Yeah? How is the problem? Then what is the issue? That attracts attention because people will get to look at uh, general issues that involve their life. So try your best to portray that. How does that affect them? That is the thing that you should put forward first. And then next, you would propose an idea, your research, yeah? obviously your research, how your research can solve that problem. Okay? It may, because you don't just tell, tell people the problem, you also give them the solution so that you sell yourself. You introduce a problem and then what can you do to solve the problem, your research. And then finally, the description, how does it work? And then how does it solve the problem? A little bit more technical things. Because why? Technical things usually chase people away. So you want to put that last, uh, but you still have to put it so that it is one kind of evidence that can convince people that your idea would work. Yeah? So these are the three sections usually people do. And uh, this, this is actually a poster. I won't call it a poster. It's just like some practice material. Uh, last time, RMC engaged an, uh, an organization called, uh, oh, I forgot what is the name, but there's an organization uh, that, that helps researchers promote their research with a fee. So that is why we discontinue, la, yeah? because, uh, because the impact is not really there. But the idea that I got from there also uh, corroborates with whatever that I show you just now, the three sections, in which they told us that the first part that you want to do is draw attention. So as you can see right here, I do soil research. So it harms people. What is it? Lead. So too much of lead, plumbum, it harms people in the soil. How does it harm them? It may be going to harm children, adults, and pregnant women. So these are the scary things that you want to put first so that it, it attracts attention. Then my research. So BioVite is actually the commercial name for the product that I have developed. So this is a solution to that problem. How do they do it? Ah, uh, down here. But I split it into two. The first part is how do I make BioVite? How do I make my product? And how does my product going to stop lead from harming people? So these are the things that very imagery, not much of text, just key phrases. So you want to keep it that way. But I also have to say there are a lot of things that I can improve here, such as the quality of the image. The better the quality, the better it will work for you. So another example of graphics that you can use is, now this is actually an infographic, more suitable to be put in a notice board than you use in social media, because obviously you cannot see the text. You can only see these two words only, phony versus legit. Yeah, you don't even know what this poster is, but to tell you one thing, this poster is about predatory journal. Okay. Now, the next one probably look better, larger image, a square form, and also the text is much more visible. Now, this one is better. It's not really the best. Better in a way that you can read text, but the image probably does not tell you that this is predatory journal. Well, it is probably a journal, but it does not tell you whether it's predatory or not. So this is like a waste of room or area. Uh, but it is good. Now, why this is good is that it is square. Now, most of the social media portal ask you to give image in square dimension. And why is that? When you hold your phone and when you scroll, they look best on your, uh, your mobile phone. Yeah. So that is why most of the image nowadays for Facebook, for Instagram, they are all in square form. But, but the next one probably is the best and I love the most, this one. Now, this one is an image, although it is not square, but it is used for Twitter. And in this image, you don't need to spend even one minute to understand the point. 
So in this image, you can see on the left-hand side, a lot of hurdles. Whereas on the right-hand side, you are welcome with a red carpet. That shows metaphorically how different between credible journals versus predatory journal. Yeah, from the image itself, you get the idea. So then you can continue read further. Why it is so hurdle? Why is so many hurdle? Because there are peer review. It is supposed to be difficult. There are many revisions. You might need to resubmit, and worse you might face rejection. So it is hard work there if you want to go for credible journals. Whereas for predatory journals, you are welcome, but just pay them. Well, either way, you get the idea. Okay? And one more thing, perhaps you cannot see at the bottom. See that? At Pai Madu. This is the brand name of the person who created this one. Not a lot of people will brand themselves this way, but if you have a name and you want to brand yourself, you follow this one, Elias Pai Madu. That means your own brand name. You sell yourself essentially by creating this, uh, this infographic. Yeah? And then the next one, oh, before that. Now, apart from this Elias that you can use, you also can use hashtag, but be careful when you use hashtag. Don't overuse it because too many hashtags will defeat its purpose. Now, contrary to the keywords that I've informed you earlier, the more keywords, the better, but there is a limit, usually six keywords. Whereas for social media posting, you can put as many hashtags as you want, but it won't help you because, because you want people to remember you based on one name only. You cannot have too many names. Okay. So if you have, you can put a hashtag, just choose one. Uh, recently, I have uh, promoting one website that, that, that house all journals in UITM. I use one hashtag only, hashtag UITM journal. So when you search that one, all the posts that I use the same hashtag will come up. That is also another way for you to increase the visibility, or at least in social media. Yeah. Okay, another thing, apart from image, I think if you ask me between image and video, which one works best, I would say both will work. It's just based on preference. If you can, if you can produce a very good infographic, that also can attract attention. But personally, I prefer video, a short one, of course, not too long. Yeah? Now, video can be very attractive, but you have to make it work. You have to make it better, make it correctly. How? I will explain later. Uh, because why? People are more attracted to animation, things that move, okay? but people cannot watch too long. It's okay if you just spare one to two minutes to make this video. I know it's tough, but if you can do it, that would work best for you. So tip number one, when you make this video, again, you have to choose your point. Be concise. Don't tell unnecessary things. Tell us the most important thing about your research and also yourself. Now, also by doing that, it is very similar to the infographic that we explained. You also need the structure, starting with introduction, then proceed to the problem, then solution and how it works. So it's the same flow, the same flow with infographic, but you have to use animation or maybe you have to uh, shoot yourself using a camera. Yeah. So use plain language as usual, use keyword, if you want the scientific people to listen to you, keywords, and of course, no jargon. So again, I'm going to show you one more video. So this is the, a live video captured uh, by, by the, in a competition. Uh, and, and in this competition, the participant actually presented their idea in one minute. Yes, Ipsis, they have three minutes, but this one is even greater, just one minute. So have a look. Over the past two years, youth unemployment has been on the rise. It currently represents just under 40% of all unemployment in Australia. Young graduates are leaving university and finding it more and more difficult to enter any form of creative industry. Now, the common stipulation is that you can't get a job without experience, but you can't get a job to get the experience. Now, 
Meanwhile, 42% of small businesses failed in 2003 to 2007, and the figures haven't improved much. Amongst many reasons this is happening is a consistent lack of quality in their branding, marketing, websites, and designs. The kind of training that these graduates have just spent three to six years training for. Now, what if there was an enterprise that bridged these two sets of frightening statistics? I want to build that bridge. So there you go. Very short, just one minute. And this man actually won the competition. And he brought home several thousand Australian dollars just for one minute's work. But I believe there's longer than that. But actually, when I show you this video, do you get the message? Actually, there's a message that I'm trying to deliver to you through this video. And that is, young graduate cannot get a job. Why? Because they can't sell themselves. So how do you sell themselves? There are so many ways. One of the ways, whatever the tips that I'm sharing right now, but they say they always depend on social media. So that is why. Yeah. And if you notice that whatever that is given here, they're very short. And if you count carefully, there are seven sentences over here that covers all the sections that I informed you just now, the intro, the problem, the solution, and also the conclusion. Okay. So this is how we should make it. But I would like to ask you, um, are you attracted to this video? Uh, maybe not because you only see that person's face. Yeah, you are right. Because when you look at TV right now, the advertisement, see their video, how heavily they are edited. And for a good reason. Because usually edited video, you can include elements, the angle, the transition. These are the things that attracts attention even better. So, so there, I want to show you the next video in which I like it particularly because it is, it is related to the research that I'm, go, um, that I'm doing. Now, for those who don't know about Nas Daily, this is what it is produced. So all credit to Nas Daily for making this video such a nice one. But watch this video. It's three minutes long and take the idea. Whatever that I told you just now, they have the structure. They have the language, the plain language to work around. But they also add one more element, the video editing. It is so nice. So have a look. Hi, the guy you see next to me is solving one of the hardest problems in the world. Hi, my name is Marino. But first, let me tell you what the problem is. Pollution. See, lakes like this one are contaminated. And according to data, this is the case for 40% of the world's lakes and rivers. So when Marino's childhood lake also got contaminated... I had to do something about it. This scientist with a PhD degree from a Japanese university took a break from school, went to a bank, got a loan and dedicated his time... To fix my lake. He came up with a unique solution. You put this solution in dirty lake water and BAM! The solution attracts the contaminated particles and floats them to the top. And this is so environmentally friendly that you can eat it. Because it's 100% organic. So after 15 minutes, you can see the difference between a clean and polluted water. If I can clean this cup, then I can clean whole lake. So he went to his childhood lake and dropped a ton of his solution, treated it with biofilters, nanotechnology, and crazy biology, and after a few months, he was able to transform the lake from this to this. A full 180 degree transformation that created a lake clean of parasites, bacteria, and pollution. The birds came back and people did too. What is this method that you used? I used the nanotechnology, but the nanotechnology used in the wastewater treatment, but I used in the wetland and the natural habitat. And why do more people do this? Because it's expensive and it's very hard, but 
It's not impossible. It's not impossible. That's why now Marino is thinking big. He wants to clean Peru's biggest lake. This, with an entire team, PhDs in science, millions of dollars in funding, patented technology, and a noble goal of making the world cleaner for everybody. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you not attracted? At least I am attracted. But towards the end of this video, do you see what pops up? The brand name. So don't you ever forget, branding is so, so important. Uh, so with that, I will move on to tips number two. So this is more applicable to the video that you have just saw just now. Uh, so put things simple, uh, when you describe a point, point by point, make sure the sentence is very short. Use plain language, one point per sentence. Now, whatever that you do, when you measure whatever that you pop up, even uh, the, the things that you say during that video, in order to reinforce the, uh, the engagement, people know what you're talking, you put caption. So just now the video have done that. Highlight the keywords, yeah? And nothing can beat the professional videographer. So if you have a, if you care, if you have the money and you can engage the videographer, by all means use it because it's a very different thing when you shoot using a DSLR and also a, a very cheap handphone. Uh, but phones are getting very good nowadays, especially the latest iPhone. The latest iPhone, they say they capture very good video until the point that they claim it matches those in Hollywood. I don't know. Maybe people with iPhone knows about it, but if you do, then shoot yourself with this video, get a good video and background music. So with the background music is so dramatic, you are more attracted. If you're, not, if you're not attracted to the visual, at least your ear will ask you, go watch that video, yeah? And of course, when you look at that video, there are so many transitions, click, 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 click. And that is actually one technique that the advertisement used. When you look at those advertisements, you realize that they are very loud, not only they're very loud, they use very short transition as if like they're hypnotizing you. But that is the way to attract attention, yeah? And of course, in order to do all that, you have to be good. Or you don't have to be good, but you can employ people are good in this software and help you do it. Yeah, these are the way. Okay, so we have come to the end of our talk. So the conclusion, uh, I know uh, for people in social science publishing in high impact journals will going to uh, be very difficult. Uh, but if you can do it, by all means do it. Not only it is good for your visibility, but it's also good for your chance to get promoted. So try your best. If you still cannot, keep trying, but don't get disappointed. You still need to publish. So go for open access journal, just publish, yeah. Uh, because high impact journals, they are well connected. They have the uh, reputation that people will read and even take it seriously. So visibility and reliability is there. Uh, for uh, researchers, especially in the hotel, in, in hotel management and also uh, culinary arts, you might be very niche. So it's good that uh, faculty hotel and tourism management have their own journal and if not mistaken this journal i'm very hopeful that you'll get into scopus very soon it has the quality to do it but may, may, maybe not 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 having the luck yet but it will once that is in then you can you can publish whatever the niche word that you have yeah under that journal or you can just publish in any uitm journals index in my site it will still do its job but beyond that when people come to self-promotion, you want to promote yourself. Now, we Asian have a culture of being shy. Uh, you possibly want to put it aside first for your own career. Because there is a say in, in Bahasa Melayu called Masuk Bakul and Angkat. Um, 
I would say that's probably not a bad thing if you do it the good way. Because some people might assume that you're promoting yourself because you're arrogant, but no. Think of it that you want to advance your career. You want people to see you do it, even though you don't feel it's comfortable. So with that, uh, that is the end of my talk. And just like that video, I would like to promote two things. Number one, myself. That is the QR code to access my CV. So if you have a phone, take it up, scan that CV, and you, get, you, can, you can get to see whatever the details about myself. And the other thing that I want you to see is the journal just now, UITN journal. So scan this QR code. It will bring you to the portal, and you can see all UITM journals plus their submission link. So with that, thank you for listening. Uh, back to you, Dr. Zalika. All right. Thank you, Dr. Yong, for a very insightful and informative talk just now, which I believe that uh, with social media, media today, we will um, make ourselves or yourself visible with the um, worldwide and globally. So now I will open to the floor for question and answer. Please post your question or answer, uh, your uh, question or comment in the question uh, and answer chat box um, on the right, uh, bottom right hand side of your Zoom page. And don't forget to include your full name and your designation too. All right, uh, share friends. Uh, okay, for the first question, we have um, Dr. Let me see the chat box. Um, from Dr. Mashita Muhammad Nujin. Okay, uh, Dr. Mashita uh, asks how to merge Pablon, our researcher ID, under different Gmail account, uh, personal and UITM. Merge Pablon's profile. Uh, I don't kind of get the question. How, how can you repeat the question again? Sorry. Oh, is it is it posted in the chat? In the chat box. Yes, I can see it. How to merge Pablon's researcher ID under different Gmail accounts, personal and UITN. Uh, I haven't merged Pablon's myself, but I saw that some of the uh, fellow colleagues have several accounts. Um, I would say if there are like credentials over there, you can always send a uh, uh, send a request, send a request to the admin of Pablons and ask them to merge. Uh, because so far, I haven't seen any function just yet to merge these two things. Unlike uh, Scopus, Scopus, you actually can uh, uh, do it yourself. You just check, check to profile, and then click one button merge. And then the admin of Scopus will going to do it for you. But uh, I did not notice that Pablons can do that. So by all means, send them an email. They were going to respond. Yeah. The help desk. Okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Yong, I just want to add on Pablons. I have the same problems. I mean, I set up uh, an account using my Gmail. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm using my Salam email. And then suddenly now we are using UITM email. So you just, uh, I, I've shared the link at the chat box. You can just uh, create a ticket. Ticket is I mean some uh, an issue, so you just uh, highlight that you have two account and you would like to merge it. Usually, it will take like fourteen days for them to merge the account. So now I'm using the latest one under the uh, the new the latest UITM emails. Okay, so that actually is the same with uh, the last time when I asked the Pablons to update the website the website URL for one of the journals that I manage. So it's the same system then. It's a, it's a general complaint portal with ticket system then. Yeah, it's the same one. Next, we have a question in the chat box. Mr. Fidon, I can see the chat box. All right, uh, I'm going to read the uh, question for you. Currently, are there still incentives like fees paid and monetary incentive for publishing in high impact journal papers like previously from uh, Mimi Architecture? Uh, okay, now uh, last time we used to have like uh, incentive given by RMC, uh, but a lot has happened since uh, last year, last few years. 
And because of that, we also need to consider to expand the incentive for publication fee. And as a result, that has been scrapped for now. For now. I, I can't say in the future whether we're going to have more incentive or not because that's, that depends on the financial ability of UITM. So we are in the tough times right now. So the budget has to be used in a more prioritized area. Uh, so that has been scrapped currently. Uh, however, those money actually, they were repurposed to uh, enhance the Pembiayaan uh, Yuran Penerbitan Artikel in short form PYPA. So that scheme, last time we only pay out to 2,000, but now it has been increased to 5,000. But of course, the conditions will be uh, that article have to be indexed in Q1 or Q2 under JCR. Uh, web of science, not scopus, yeah, web of science. Then you can get that 5,000. Okay, so that, that is why that has been scrapped because we want to move into the more prioritous uh, objective to increase the publication, high impact journals. Okay, Mr. Pierce, do you have a next question? No, I think uh, from the participants, that is all. Uh, do we have any privately text to you, Dr. Zalika? Yes. Uh, okay, Dr. Yong. Uh, so uh, in my private question, okay, okay. since nowadays we can see uh, lots of uh, fancy title uh, for the journal. So, so can we use a fancy title for uh, journal and what is your advice? Fancy journal? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, Sorry, fancy title for journal. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, uh, I'm not quite sure what fancy uh, means here, but I assume that it is uh, using some terms with this, yes. uh, which is quite general in, in terms of meaning. Uh, Can I say that? Mm -hmm. okay. mm. um, now, to start off, journal is supposed to be uh, read by researchers seasoned researchers okay? uh, so they have to be of high quality and because of that usually the the ways that I would advise new journals to when they set up their names have to be reflecting the niche area yeah not just area of research the niche area that means possibly some newly or undiscovered uh, research area that's about to begin uh, so to sum it up, you have, I mean, these words have to be keywords again, keywords or more general keywords of a research area. Now, coming to the word fancy, I know that there are a few journals, they use fancy word and they still survive. Um, that, that is because the people who started these so-called journals with fancy name, they are somebody in that research area. So they can do it because People know that journal, even though with a fancy name, people thought that uh, possibly it is not see, it is not very professional. But people know who managed that, that, that journal. So the trust is already there. But if nobody knows, I mean, the editors inside that journal, but yet they use a fancy name, that probably might backfire because uh, the trust, yeah, there's the reputation, yeah. The, the, the reputation is quite important here. So I, if, if, if you are just beginning your career, you are not very on top just yet, maybe start with a more professional name, keywords that reflect the field of research, that would be best for you. Okay. All right, thank you, Dr. Yang. So for the next question, uh, how far um, be, be a, a paper review make you visible? Okay. Uh, okay, number one is that uh, I don't uh, sharing from my from, from my own experience. Okay, uh, being a paper reviewer leads to more opportunity to become a reviewer. Uh, whether or not it's visible, well, there you go. If you review and you're very consistent, you perform well being a reviewer, your stats would add up. Just now what I told you, scholar one, editor, editor manager, and also some sort. They actually have statistics. Now, for those 
people who have managed OJS before, even inside they also have statistics. People who delay the decision, people who like uh, submit very early, they record it. So if you perform well, that gives people the confidence, you being professional. So you build your reputation even when you are a reviewer. So what I discovered is that currently being a good reviewer will going to uh, give me more jobs for review, but I don't mind it because why? I can always say no, number one. Number two, when new paper comes, comes my way, it is under my field of study. So I get to see the, uh, the direction of the research, new research that has not been published just yet. I know the research is coming. So that gives me new idea in doing my own research as well. So in terms of visibility, it's in the eyes of the editors, not researchers per se, but there, have, uh, there, there are other benefits that comes when you yourself being a reviewer here. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, just, just want to add, two years ago, when the economy is still good, actually Clarivate have one award, one category for the reviewers in Malaysia with the highest number of review. Yeah, there is such an award, being the best reviewer. They have such award. Mm -hmm. And if not mistaken, the money is, if not mistaken, three or 5,000, if not more. At least 5,000 because KPT level, usually the price money is at least 5,000. So there you have it, the award. There is such a award, but nowadays because of the economy, there's no more like this award. Okay, all right. Thank you, Dr. Yong. Uh, we have uh, one question uh, from Dr. Rauf, which he wants to uh, ask orally. Uh, is it okay, yes. Mr. Fridaus? Sure. All right. Dr. Hello, sorry. Hello. Hello, Hello Dr. Rauf. Assalamualaikum. Uh, hi, Dr. Uh, Dr. Yong. Uh, I'm Dr. O from FSU. Uh, I ask you regarding the website. Uh, yes, uh, personally, uh, one way to increase the researcher visibility in UITM is by uh, having an own UITM. I have uh, two questions here. First, uh, yes, we have a UITM expert, but in terms of the visibility, it's very low. Talking about the SEO, as you mentioned just now, search engine optimization. Uh, when you uh, search uh, by using the Google search, for example, UITM uh, expert uh, website is still low compared to the another uh, academic uh, platform like uh, Google Scholar, Scopus, or Publon. So maybe um, this is one uh, need, we need to uh, uh, take into consideration. The another thing, maybe uh, by using the UITM platform or UITM uh, uh, mediums, maybe. Oh, to increase the visibility of research of UITM uh, staff in UITM, maybe, uh, yes, RMC maybe can incentive uh, or maybe initiative uh, each of the lecturers they have on a uh, website to increase in terms of the research visibility. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rauf. Uh, I would like to elaborate on the SEO. Now, uh, UITM expert has just launched like a uh, maybe just one or two years old. So in terms of uh, SEO, it takes time sometimes. Uh, and also that also uh, related to the architecture of the UITM expert portal as well. So I'm not sure why they are so low. I also admit UITM expert, when you search it, it doesn't rank so high as compared to last time. Now, if not mistaken, uh, RMC previously have uh, subscribed to uh, Pure Elsevier. If you remember, last time when you search your name, that will be on the top of the search list because of the architecture. That I mean, the, the IT department in Elsevier, they're, they're doing a really good job. Uh, perhaps maybe UITM can do better on that one. The architecture of the system itself, possibly it's not so visible at the moment, but by all means, have your information there because the more people will search on it, it will going to bump up in the search list. So keep using it, keep using it until the new system comes. Lah. Yeah. And then the other one is a uh, researcher's website. Uh, while taking myself an example, I'm from FSG and FSG actually um, 
the IT department is doing a really good job in creating a website for every staff, every staff member. So what was asked for me is, I was asked to prepare a small description of myself. So I know my description has not been so perfect, given that Dr. Zalika read so not just now, very long. It should be shorter. Uh, but there are small description about ourselves. It also contains our phone number, the information, and also our profile. So essentially, I think uh, UITM staff, each of us have a profile, a page. It's just whether it is updated or not. So that is a big question because many of us actually don't even know we have that page. So go find out. If you have one, update it. Put your research information in. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, we have the last question also from architecture. We have a lot of uh, fans from architecture with uh, Fris framed uh, this year. Uh, I find that Prisma updates is not as efficient as before since Pita, sorry, Pita took over compared to the faculty coordinators. And uh, another question is a little bit technical. Maybe Dr. Yong, uh, you can try to explain this. How can we edit information on UITM expert besides expert areas? Uh, I think there is a function where the UITM expert portal that you can suggest addition, uh, editing. Mm -hmm. um, but if you cannot find it, I think uh, the best way that you can go forward is units because all system in UITM, including UITM expert, is managed by PPII, people infrastructure. So you can always make your uh, a complaint in ER Duan, uh, or not, not ER Duan. I think it's units that, that, that's yeah. important that you can, you can complain mm -hmm. about how to update your information. Um, so that is one. Another one thing is what, what was the, the other one? The other one question? Uh, uh, regarding Prisma being took over by oh, oh, Vita. Yeah. 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 Now, last time Prisma was handled by uh, faculty coordinators and then recently it is managed solely by Pita. Now, that is because we want to cut down the, uh, the red tapes, yeah? Because last time there are two levels, the faculty level and also uh, PITA's level. So now there's no longer any coordinators from the faculty, just PITA. Now, most of the complaints come in is because, uh, not because they are late, but they are strict. They are very strict and for good reason as well. So I, I understand your problem because sometimes they want to see evidence that only they approve your... Your, your entry uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that is uh, maybe because that is the reason why your uh, your prisma approval is got so got so slow uh, anyway if you have any issues related to prisma you can always contact the person in charge in chair Muhammad Ismail Abidin from Pita Muhammad Ismail Abidin and he to, to, to me, he's, he's quite efficient in, in terms of solving things. So you just need to drop him an email or a message or a call to solve it for you. All right. Thank you. Uh, and we have our last, last as promised, <laughs> uh, question for this afternoon uh, from Dr. Hafiz. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Fidel and uh, Dr. Yong. Okay. Um, talking about uh, research visibility and also researchers visibility i mean um could you like share with us any efforts coming from the rmc in order to help uh, our seniors uh, researchers and also young researchers in developing uh, their portfolios eh? uh, perhaps uh, both of us learn by doing your, by ourselves and i think rmc have some initiative to be shared and to be utilized by our staff. And maybe you could share on that matter. And for a start, I mean, for, for, for a start, what should we do? I mean, for maybe after this event, what can we do to improve our visibility uh, at short term? Thank you very much, Dr. Yong. Thanks, Dr. Hafiz. Um, well, I think uh, recently, uh, the Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation have undergo some restructuring. Last time, RMC, was the one task to increase the visibility, which is under you during that time. <clears throat> but nowadays, after restructuring, it goes directly under PNCPI right now. So they have an office that promotes research. <coughs> uh, so occasionally, you can see the Facebook page of uh, PNCPI. Occasionally, they showcase um, 
latest publication uh, by, by our staff. Yeah? And then inside there, you can see some graphical abstract description and whatnot, contact information. So those are the things that is done by Dr. Muzame and his unit uh, that is directly under uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor's office, not RMC. Uh, but speaking of RMC, uh, currently we don't have any units that are responsible to spread visibility. Uh, however, under Renew, there are a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of departments over there that helps uh, researchers to increase their research visibility either by talks, training, and whatnot. So a lot of this visibility effort actually comes from small research group like RG, COE and whatnot. So those are the ones that are responsible for their own visibility. However, coming back to your question, uh, for staff, for example, the seasoned staff, senior staff and also junior staff, uh, you probably want to do it yourself initially. And you can just simply do it by posting and sharing in social media platform at the moment and uh, just wait for your opportunity because uh, if you if you share and, and spread news through social media you can follow the strategies that i told you earlier otherwise you can just start small because you have to start somewhere there's no such thing as the first post will get viral no it takes time um, uh, so so you have to start share your information in social media uh, however, if you get senior enough, you might receive opportunity to write for uh, a news portal, for example. So take that opportunity. Just like uh, what, what, what have been offered to us right now. Uh, the corporate office is inviting vlog. So capture your video and send to them. Tell them what you do during this uh, uh, movement control order at home, doing your research. I mean, that is that is a way. It's opening right now. Do your own video, send to them. Hopefully, they share. Uh, so that is another way. But beyond that, I would say, believe it or not, the best way to increase your visibility is publish paper. That's all. So you don't have to do all the hard work, purposely go and share the news. I know that's hard work. I feel the same too. But if you can publish in index journal, that actually do your course. Because by the time you publish, Scopus, uh, Scopus already index your entry. Uh, Google Scholar also automatically add your profile if you have a profile. So just publish. I mean, as easy as I said, you have to start writing lah, yeah, the stuff, no matter how senior and how junior you are. All right, thank you, Dr. Hafiz, for the question. All right, unfortunately, um, that is all the time that we have for our session for today. Should we have further inquiries, feel free to email us, or you can also email to our speaker directly. All the information is now being shown in your screen. Okay. On behalf of the Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management, I would like to convey out I will almost appreciation once again to Dr. Yong Soon Kong for answering those questions and for the great sharing session just now. It was a pleasure to have you with us, Doctor. So this concludes FRIWS 2021 with VIP for the seventh session. We hope to see you again. Uh, at our next session will be happening on 2nd July. Uh, with the speaker, uh, Dr. Faizan Ali, with an interesting topic on the collaboration in research and publication, why and how. Thank you for all for joining us. We hope you have...